Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening and welcome to ABS News Talk with yours truly, Chris Anu, coming to you from the great state of Houston, Texas. It's a pleasure to be back here after all a while. Tonight, I come to you with the interim government school resumption policy, and I will also talk a little bit, a little bit of what is going on. The normalcy, the normalcy that is returning in our county, Indian County, Mundemba, precisely. I will also, of course, be bringing to you the main subject of the day, Sarko versus Ambazonia. The verdict is out. The verdict is out. Please do not touch your remote. If you are just joining, go ahead, hit that share button and let us get the platform saturated. Let's get the platform saturated at least in the next five minutes. Let's have at least 500 people for me to come back and start with this presentation proper. So please go ahead, go ahead, hit your share button, send the link out there to everyone, everyone you can imagine. Let them know. The anchor man is alive. Not alive, but alive. Please hit that, that, hit that share button and I'll be right back. Once more, ladies and gentlemen, this is News Talk with your trolley, Chris Anu, again coming to you from the great state of Texas, precisely here in Houston. It's a pleasure to be back after a long wait, uh, traveling and being in court to uh, have to answer questions for a lawsuit we never filed. A lawsuit we never filed. I will be coming to that as the main subject of the day. Before I get there, I like again for all of you to go ahead, hit that share button. Let us let everyone out there know I am here today. Thank you, Ground Zero, for tuning in. I know lots of you complain. There is no electricity, no elect electricity, and you are wondering what what you will do to have access to this broadcast. I can assure you we will rebroadcast on satellite again and again and again and again within the next 24 hours or more so that all of you, all of you can uh, at least uh, watch it. Ladies and gentlemen, no mercy, no mercy is returning particularly in Dion Ingute's backyard in Mundemba, where Ambazonia Restoration Forces, Ambazonia Restoration Forces dealt a blow on the French Cameroon Army, as you can find the images right there on your screen, they dealt a blow on the Cameroon Army. If you count those images, you will discover that there are at least 12 of them Two of them brought down by the restoration forces of Ambazonia. The restoration forces of Ambazonia. That is what they did two days ago. Yes, it was two days ago in the in the in the uh, Mundemba in Mundemba. That was in again in Mundemba. A lot of people do Cameroon would love to send the. Uh, uh, ministers, the uh, governors, the uh, DOs, uh, to parade around the territory telling people no mercy, no mercy 
has returned or is returning. In fact, I read a statement this morning coming from, I think, uh, the Colonial Divisional Officer for Batibo, threatening parents and threatening teachers to make sure that they go back to the classroom and threatening that anything known as community schools, if they dare open in Batibo, they are breaking established laws. I don't know whether there are laws in that country, but that came from, <clears throat> I read that statement from the Colonial Divisional Officer for uh, Batibo today, threatening, uh, threatening parents and threatening this community school to make sure they shut down, they shut down. And he said anybody violating the established law is uh, disturbing the return to no mercy. This is what I call no mercy. What you find on your screen is what I call no mercy. No mercy means, ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, doing exactly what you find on your screen with the Ambazonia Restoration Fighters. Doing exactly what you find on the screen with the Ambazonia Restoration Fighters. Yes, no mercy is returning. No mercy is, is returning. And we want to thank all our fighters in the Mundemba, Indian County in particular, for a job well done. A job well done in sending a strong message to La Republic du Cameroon that the restoration fighters may be slow to act, but indeed they are acting. La Republic du Cameroon is planning to take a message next month to the United Nations to the effect that no mercy as we hear them preaching has returned on ground zero but i don't i don't know how they tell that narrative with images such as this one how do they tell that narrative with images like this one they were hoping that they will go to the united nations and tell those who care to hear that all that is left now all that they are engaged in now is a reconstruction reconstruction in fact they also plan to tell the united nations that all schools have resumed even schools which were shut down they have resumed that is why everywhere in ambazonia their mayors their colonial officials and uh, whatsoever whatsoever their chiefs their cultural and development uh, associations they are out there doing their best on behalf of the regime to make sure that all schools, including established schools, what we call government schools, which have been banned, reopen in Ambazonia. I have a statement from the interim government that I will be bringing to you before this uh, broadcast is over, and it is our, our official position on this school subject. And the message is short and it is simple. No La Republic du Cameroon so-called government school reopens anywhere, anywhere in Ambazonia. And folks, do not forget, we are where we are today, seven years in war with over 30,000 of our people killed because of the educational system. The, te the teachers protested the kind of education that our children were being taught in those schools. Paul Beer, for seven years, refused to come to the table to negotiate, and they refused to change the school system, and they are there trying to force every parent and every teacher to attend to those classrooms. We are warning you, we are warning you, you send your child to any government institution, so-called government school, you are taking the risk. Remember what happened in Kumba. Remember what happened in Kumba. I do not think anybody on ground zero wants to take the risk of sending his or her child to any La Republic du Cameroon so-called government school. They have been banned and until this war is over, those institutions will never again function in Ambazonia, not managed by La Republic du Cameroon, not by the same teachers, not by not the same curriculum. No, we want real education. And that is what we are fighting for, and so we are encouraging every parent on the ground. Please, please make sure 
you get your children into any community school near you, I will be bringing you, in fact, I should bring you that statement. Uh, I think I should bring you that statement at this uh, moment, ladies and gentlemen. Give me, give me uh, 50 seconds and I will be back with that school statement. Stay tuned. Ladies and gentlemen, again at this moment, I am bringing to you our school policy for uh, uh, this academic year that uh, uh, start, I believe, on Wednesday the 4th. I'm told that the school year begins on Wednesday the 4th. And uh, people are wondering and asking, what is the interim government position? What is the interim government saying? Please listen to the sound of my voice as I bring you this message. As we prosecute this war, we are not ignorant of the fact that education, the proper one, of course, in our case, holds significant importance in Ambazonia as it plays a vital role in shaping the future of our nation. We understand that quality education is essential for the intellectual, social, and economic development of our children. However, as a result of the ongoing political conflict, the security situation has deteriorated in Ambazonia, making it imperative for us to devise a comprehensive school resumption policy for the country. In light of the political unrest and human rights violations perpetrated by the La Republique du Cameroon government, we here at the interim government firmly assert that no La Republique du Cameroon operated schools will be allowed to reopen in Ambazonia. The La Republique du Cameroon government has consistently demonstrated its disregard for the safety and well-being of our people, including the brutal targeting and killing of innocent students. It is our responsibility, ladies and gentlemen, to protect our children from such atrocities and ensure their safety. We strongly encourage parents to consider, please consider community schools as an alternative to La Republique du Cameroon operated so-called government schools. Community schools are locally operated educational institutions that are deeply rooted in the values, culture, and aspirations 
of Ambazonian people. These schools are run by trusted members of our communities who are dedicated to providing quality education while fostering a safe and nurturing environment for our children. Why community schools offer a viable option for education in Ambazonia? It is crucial, it is crucial for parents to consider the prevailing security situation before sending their children to any school, and I mean any school, including community schools. The conflict has resulted in an increased risk of violence and disruption. Therefore, parents must assess the security conditions in their respective communities and make informed decisions regarding their children's education. The Ambazonia Interim Government will work closely with local authorities, community leaders, and educational stakeholders to ensure the implementation of this policy. By establishing clear guidelines and standards for community schools, we can maintain the quality of education provided why, provided, I mean to say, why addressing security concerns at the same time. Regular consultations with parents, teachers, and community members will be conducted to evaluate the effectiveness of the policy and make necessary adjustments. Recognizing the importance of education in nation building, the Ambazonia Interim Government is committed, committed to investing in resources and training required to enhance the quality of education in community schools. By providing adequate support systems, we aim to create an enabling environment for both teachers and students to thrive. We are aware, ladies and gentlemen, we are aware of the threat being posed by colonial officials to force their colonial schools to operate or to reopen. Anything, and I mean anything, labeled as government schools, secondary schools, and orders being fronted by proponents of the colonial government in Yaoundé on our territory, who is shut down by the restoration forces. Restoration forces have our full support and backing in shutting down all so-called government schools in Ambazonia. No number of military camps around the school campuses will stop the restoration forces. Parents, you send your child to any so-called government school, the risk will be yours. Again, the risk will be yours to bear. And that is our statement, ladies and gentlemen, for this school subject. When I return, I will go straight into Sarko versus Ambazonia. Stay tuned.
thanks for staying put, ladies and gentlemen. At this moment, I bring you uh, my main subject for the day, Sarko versus Amazonia. Again, the subject is uh, Sarko versus Amazonia. As you can find on your screen, the message is the verdict. The verdict is out. Now, you will recall that we did not, the interim did not, uh, government did not sue Sarko. Sarko sued the interim government. We did not think it was necessary for, um, for the interim government to take Sarko to court because we knew Ground Zero needed the money most, not lawyers, but he did, and we faced it. The case, aptly named Samwe Ekome Sarko versus Ambazonia, has reached its conclusive verdict. The hearing and ruling took place on Wednesday, August 22nd, within a county courthouse in Baltimore, Maryland, under the guardians of George Baranko, the Honorable George Baranko. Now, before I take you into the courtroom, let us delve into the background of the case before I bring you details of what of, of the proceedings. The essence of the case lies in the impeachment and removal of uh, Dr. Samuel Ekome Sako from his position at the helm of the interim government of Ambazonia in early 2022. Despite being stripped of power, Sako unwilling to relinquish his hold hastily orchestrated a meeting under false pretenses, purportedly involving the board of directors of Ambazonia Foundation and the Southern Cameroons Foundation. It is important to note here that these foundations are responsible for managing donations gathered or collected for the aid of refugees in other humanitarian causes on ground one and ground zero. Aware that these foundations held substantial funds, Sarko seemingly believed that if he were to depart, he would have to take these two entities, the two foundations, along with him. The objective of this meeting, he called, composed solely of directors who align with him was twofold. The, the mission was twofold. Number one, to dismiss the president of the board along with the treasurer and the secretary whom Sarko perceived as unsupportive and uncooperative. Secondly, the meeting Sarko called aimed to appoint a new board of directors without the presence or consent of the dismissed officials. Note the term appoint, not the term appoint, because I will clarify that later. Under the cover of darkness, under the cover of darkness, Sarko and collaborators swiftly devised new articles of incorporation for the two foundations and expedited their submission to the Maryland Secretary of State, where the entities were registered. This hasty action by Sarko and Co. was undertaken to transfer ownership of the two foundations to Sarko. Their actions unfolded seamlessly, unbeknownst to the interim government the legitimate custodians of the two foundations. Having successfully filed the new articles of incorporation, transferring ownership and control of the foundations to themselves or to himself, Sarko and his accomplices hastened to the bands. There, they presented their fabricated board as the newly appointed, appointed directors in charge of the foundation's accounts. Upon encountering this new board, 
The banks removed the names of the legitimate officers from the interim government and replaced them with Sarko's conniving appointees. However, as they departed, smirking and deriding Ambazonia, fortune failed to favor their treachery. It did not take long for the interim government to receive notification that they no longer had access to their accounts as the board of directors had been altered by Sarko. Without delay, the interim government petitioned the Maryland Secretary of State and reclaim ownership or retain ownership of the foundations. Consequently, the bank reinstated the interim government's access to the accounts with all the funds intact. Emboldened by this development and the hopeful of recovering the foundations, the bank accounts and the funds within them, Sarko took to court and sued six members of the interim government, including yours truly, who legitimately, members of the interim government, who legitimately managed the foundations. Sarko's plea to the court was to compare the court to return their funds and the foundations to them. During the hearing, the case revolved around the legitimacy of the meeting called by Sarko Ekome to change the board of the Ambazonia Foundation and that of the Southern Cameroons Foundation uh, since or uh, considering that he had been impeached and removed from office. This crucial issue of impeachment and removal undermined Sarko's authority to call a meeting and effect changes within the two foundations, Ambazonia Foundations and the Southern Cameroons Foundations. The judge deemed that an individual who had been impeached and removed could not or no longer exercise the powers and responsibilities that came with their former position or his former position. Consequently, Sarko lacked the legal standing to convene a meeting and alter the board composition. Their main witness, Victorine Yangni, who found the authority of Sarko under scrutiny, suggested, suggested at a point that she was the one who called for the meeting. However, ladies and gentlemen, however, she was unable to explain to the court what authority she had in calling the meeting, considering that the bylaws of the foundations are very clear, very clear as per who can call such a meeting and alter the board. The bylaws state that only the president of the board, the secretary, the treasurer, or two board members could call for an extraordinary meeting to alter the board. Neither Sarko nor Victorine Yagni were board members of Ambazunia's foundation, neither were they the secretary or president. Victorine admitted in court that she was only financial secretary. The admission disqualified her and made their meeting illegal, according to the judge. It apparently got so desperate in court to the extent that Victorine lied lied to the court when she testified that she was the one who called the meeting. The meeting's Zoom evidence, however, submitted in court from Ambazonia's side, from our lawyer, proved that it was actually Samwe Ekomesako who had called the meeting even when he had been impeached and removed. The way they failed, even woefully, wasn't just about who did or who did not call the meeting. The second challenge they faced 
was convincing the court and the judge that they met the conditions of the bylaws when they called for the meeting in which they changed the board. And Bazonia's lawyer quoting from the bylaws reminded the Sarko side of a section in the bylaws that stated that before such a meeting can hold, all board members must be given at least at least 48 hours, that is two days of notice. Ask when the meeting was held from when the announcement for it was made. Sarko's team said all happened on the same day, on the same day. The announcement and the meeting all happened on the same day, contrary to the provisions in the bylaws. The judge perceived that the rush in calling that meeting was not only illegal, but suspicious, and it led him to believe that the psychos acted in bad faith. They acted in bad faith. The court considered the circumstances surrounding the meeting called by Sarko Ekome, emphasizing that it appeared to be hastily organized and deliberately concealed from other board members. This raised concerns about transparency and due process. By rushing the meeting without proper notification and excluding relevant board members, Sarko's team exhibited a lack of adherence to established bylaws or protocols. Such actions undermine the credibility of the meeting and cast doubt on the legitimacy of any decisions made therein. Another significant factor that informed the judge ruling in favor of Amazonia was the documentary evidence submitted in court from the Maryland Secretary of State by Amazonia's lawyer. These documents indicated that Ambazonia Foundation is still registered under the People's Interim Government as the rightful owners. This legal documentation carried substantial weight in the court's assessment and decision as it demonstrated that the state, that means the state of Maryland, recognize this interim government's authority over the foundations. It further reinforced the notion that Sarko's attempts to unilaterally change the board of directors structure lack legal merit. The judge also took into account the internal revenue service, that is the IRS dealings with the contenders Ambazonia's lawyer told the court that the IRS recognizes only the people's interim government as the legitimate representatives of the foundations. The people's interim government is the body that the IRS has been working with in terms of taxation or tax filing and auditing. Psychos people act by the judge were not able to show any proof that they have filed any taxes with the IRS or had any contact at all with it. This disclosure linking the IRS carries significant weight as it indicated that the IRS engages in official transactions, official business only with the people's interim government, further bolstering its claim to authority over the foundations. Lastly, the court highlighted, highlighted Sarko's team failure to adhere to the bylaws of the Ambazonia Foundation and the Southern Cameroons Foundation by disregarding the established rules and procedures governing the organizations. Sarko and Co. undermined the integrity of their actions. The judge deemed it imperative for any group seeking legitimacy within an organization to follow the established bylaws, which act 
as a guiding framework for decision making. Taking all of this into account, the hearing initially scheduled for two days was brought to an end after all the witnesses, all the witnesses had testified and closing statement made by lawyers from both sides. And based on the testimonies, the judge told the plaintiff's lawyer, Sarko's lawyer, that he wasn't able to prove the merit of his case and so pass judgment in favor of the defendant, that is, the people's interim government. That's what happened in court, ladies and gentlemen. Now, let me say this. I have no reason to celebrate or salivate over this, uh, this court case or victory. As important as it may be, this victory isn't the victory we have been looking for. It does not give us Ambazonia or a free and independent Ambazonia, though it elevates institutions over individual greed. I had no doubts that social media wasn't going to be the court or the judge. Surrogates were not going to be the witnesses either. I knew for sure that when the day of reckoning, the day of judgment comes, Ambazonia will prevail. And it did. I see lots of jubilation and excitement, celebration out there for the outcome of the case, which is okay. But this is money that should have gone to ground zero to take care of our suffering and struggling people. Sako got it wasted in the hands of lawyers by dragging us into days. We will never be able to recover the money spent in the hands of these lawyers in frivolous lawsuit, thanks to Samuel Ekomesako. This court case should never have come up in the first place. We struggle a lot to raise funds for Ground Zero, to help our refugees and prisoners. And here we squander thousands in court over money that belong to the Ambazonian people. Again, thanks to a greedy scammer who con all of us and God is way to the hem of this struggle. I hope this never happen again or repeat itself again. I hope we never again entertain any other scammer and con man or con woman in the leadership of this struggle. If anything, ladies and gentlemen, if anything should teach us, teach us all a lesson from this court case, it is that structures, structures matter. Structures and laws are meant to be respected. When it became clear in court that Sarko and team had been removed, and I mean impeached and removed and dead, they were acting in defiance of his remover. It made a lot of sense to the judge about the underlying motive behind the scheme and the rush to cook the books of the foundations. It was meant to be a grab by Sacco, but it failed. I am committed, ladies and gentlemen, to strengthening the institutions and structures of this interim government. And never again should any one person or group of persons want to usurp the authority of the interim government. Those who try or those who do they will be defeated. And that is my monologue for this uh, subject, ladies and gentlemen. I believe you all got the facts as, uh, as happened in court last Wednesday. The case is over. The judge ruled in favor of the defendant, that is you, the people of Ambazonia. The court found out that Sako called a meeting to change the board of directors of Ambazonia Foundation and Southern Cameroon's foundation after he had been impeached and removed and declared he no longer had any standing to call that meeting. 
Victorine Yangne, their main witness or plaintiff who showed up, Sako was sitting somewhere in the car. I learned. Sako, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, when somebody acts as a corn man, it, 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 it is so evident. A few months ago, I think it was two months ago, the court invited us, their side and our side, to come for mediation. We went for mediation. I flew from Texas to Maryland for mediation. The court was hoping that this thing could be settled out of the court. But when we got there, our lawyer told the court, you will not accept any settlement or mediation without the ability of the court to discover the facts of the case. But guess what? Sako was in that court that day for mediation. Maybe he told we were coming there to capitulate, to surrender. But surprisingly, I don't think Sako believed, knew I was going to be there. When I went to the court that morning, I met Sako sitting on the bench. The, immediately he saw me, his head was like this. Throughout the duration he was in court, his head was like this, 90 degrees bent down. But this time, when the judgment, when the hearing and the judgment will be declared, you would think that Sarko will be in court. Sarko refused to show up in court. There were three people there representing him. And he, now I'm saying this because Sarko is out there telling everybody I wasn't, it, it wasn't Sarko who was on trial in court. My name was not mentioned in the case. Of course we know. Sarko will never have his name in anything that has to do with the law. He pushes other people to go in front. He stays behind. He does nothing so that he should not be connected to it. Now he is out there trying to let you know it is not about him. He was never uh, a witness in the court. He was never the plaintiff in the court. He pushes orders. I am so sure that today, Victorine Yangni will be saying, will be saying, you, if you give Victoria Yangni, I believe a hundred thousand dollars, she will not go back to that court because the way she looked, ladies and gentlemen, she looked so pitiful. She looked so confused in the court. But this is the point. This is the point. Sako pushes orders to do these things. His name will never be there. Look at this, for example. Sako has spent thousands, thousands of dollars, at least, I believe, should be about 30,000, between 25, 30,000 dollars. Ladies and gentlemen, that's about 16 million francs. He has spent this money with a lawyer for a frivolous lawsuit. His members were picked up. Frank Chenye and the others were picked up. They are locked up in Missouri. And guess what? Sako cannot hire, look for money. In spite of all the fundraisers they are doing on a weekly basis, Sako cannot look for money. Hire a lawyer for those comrades. Those lawyers, those comrades, ladies and gentlemen, they are using a public defender. You know, a public defender is a government lawyer. Who can, no, it really doesn't care whether you win or not. He just wants to go there and fulfill his presence. Sako has spent uh, close to $30,000 in this case, a frivolous lawsuit, and fellow Ambazonians who stood with him, who supported him, who perpetrated some of these crimes with him, they are behind bars being defended by public lawyers, government lawyers. He can hire a lawyer to defend them. Every Sako never shows up in front. The only moment Sako shows up in front of anything is when money will be received. Money, money, money will be received. Money will enter his hands. That is when he shows up in front. He called this meeting that I'm talking about when he had been impeached and removed. But he thought that he can act smart and they confiscate and Bazunia Foundation and, uh, and the Southern Cameroons Foundation that manage the finances of don that manage the donations that go to our uh, our refugees on ground one and on ground zero. He wanted to lay hold, smash the money, maybe, who knows, add it to Bitcoin and the uh, world financial. But thank God the information reached us 
timely enough and we took due action, went to the state uh, Secretary of State of Maryland and corrected those uh, documentations, went back to the banks, got our names back into the bank accounts and uh, lay possession of the accounts. We own it up to today. A dime will not see the hands of Sarko. And I also listened to him yesterday in his speech. He comes out trying to throw water in the back, on the back of uh, Ochiba, uh, Nelson Ochiba. He didn't mention Nelson Ochiba. Those of you who listened to Nelson Ochiba's uh, audio the other day, lambasting them and exposing exactly what is going on within that Kaaba, you will realize Sako comes out and says, oh no, you may intend something for, for, for good, but you don't know the way you talk, the way you use your mouth, the way you use your language, you are interest polling. Try indirectly to say to Nelson Ochiba, you shouldn't have said what you said. You shouldn't have put out that audio. Ochiba Nelson is out there saying, Iron has one more spread our legs to the treasury and is now holding it ransom. And that even when Sarko write B, I mean, even when B's go in, she will refuse to pay. And Nelson Ochiba is reminding, is reminding them, Chris, I know, told you this woman spreads her legs. And they refuse. I am quite glad that they are repeating what I told them years ago. This is vindication, ladies and gentlemen. There is a Sako said his hands were too tight. His hands were too tight. Now, Nelson Ochiba has given him an ultimatum. When Chris Andrew gave him an ultimatum, you know what? This was, this was wrong. This was not right. How can a cabinet member give the president an ultimatum? Ochiba says, whether I didn't go goes, or they go. Did you hear that in that audio? Go and listen to it. He says, either Irene Gwa goes or they go. So ladies and gentlemen, I am very glad of the outcome of this case. But again, I really wish we had spent that money, we had spent that money on ground zero. But we did it in the courts. We didn't, we didn't call for the court case. But I am glad that the courts were able to establish that the, your interim government, your interim government owns the foundations and uh, has authority over the funds in that in those foundations. That is short and simple. I heard Sarko say. I, I listened to my friend, uh, Doctor 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 Elad in Germany saying, "Oh, why are you guys so stupid? Learned people just don't understand the court process." And I was laughing at my friend. He is a lawyer, and he fails to understand the way the courts work. We went to court. The court case was, was meant to take place on Wednesday, on Tuesday and Wednesday because there were many witnesses. But getting into the courtroom on Tuesday, the judge was able to go through all the witnesses and get the lawyers to do their closing statement. And he sat right there and did the ruling. Told the plaintiff's lawyers, Sarko's lawyers, your meetings were illegal. You were not in the position to call for any meeting. And you did not give the two days notice for all the board members to be present in that meeting. You were impeached and removed. And for you to have called that meeting was illegal. And so he said, my ruling is for the defendants. <laughs> that was it. If they like, they are at liberty to go and file for what? Uh, an, an appeal. They are liberty. You don't have to, uh, I mean, there is no condition to fight for an appeal. If you, if, if you are not satisfied with a case, you can go fight an appeal. But they will have to change those bylaws to go fight an appeal, ladies and gentlemen, because that is what the judge found out, that they did not respect the bylaws because Sarko was not a, the bylaws states that only board members I mean, only the counties elect board members. Chris Anu cannot elect board members or appoint board members of the foundations. But Sarko rushed a meeting overnight, appointed board members, rushed to the state, the secretary of state, changed the, the documentation, rushed to the bank, took 
over the bank accounts and thought, oh, that is the way scammers operate. Still today. Unfortunately, it failed. Ladies and gentlemen, I will bring in now my guests for tonight. I am being joined here by Comrade Oliver Asa, who was uh, with us in court, and he happens to be the Deputy Chair of the Judicial Council here at the Interim Government. Comrade, great to find you. Great to have you, sir. Uh, my pleasure, uh, as, uh, Comrade Chris. Okay, wonderful. Uh, did I say anything out of order in my presentation about what happened in court? Please, t let me know. Uh, no, I, I think you stated exactly what uh, happened in court. Uh, the other point that you missed was the idea of the quorum. The quorum, that the, yes. Uh, yeah, the, the plaintiff lawyer was trying to say that that meeting, the illegal meeting had a quorum. But uh, if the meeting does not meet, meet the, uh, the conditions, uh, that is to say, uh, the people that are supposed to call the meeting, either the president, the treasury, uh, the treasurer, the secretary, or two or two members of the board, or does not give the 48 hours of notice, the meeting is uh, not and void up in issue, and therefore uh, the idea of a forum does not even come into play. Absolutely, absolutely. And, uh, you know, one of their arguments was that, oh, the quorum met, the quorum met. After trying to uh, expunge the bylaws, to condemn the bylaws, because their lawyer said, this, he first of all said, these bylaws are, uh, uh, they are a fraud. They have no signatures, and so they cannot be admitted in court. But then he quoted the same bylaws to, uh, to state that, they had the legitimate right to they, they had the right to, to hold a meeting and that they constituted a quorum according to the same bylaws he was trying to dismiss isn't it exactly exactly anna what was very uh, uh a lot of hypocrisy and and downright uh uh deceit uh without lack of faith no bona fide idea for the uh the the lawyer of the petitioner uh trying to dismiss the bylaws and at the same time quoting from the bylaws so he got enmeshed in, in in his own trap and therefore the judge asked the question are, are we here taking the bylaws into consideration or not and finally uh, both lawyers uh, agreed that the bylaws were were valid and that was going to be the center of the whole idea of the in program so uh, so finally, uh, it was easy to have uh, run away with uh, uh, the verdict in favor of the, uh, the the respondents. Now, I'm sure you have listened to uh, the audios out there coming from uh, Sarko trying to uh, sweet talk people. Oh, it is not over yet. I wasn't in court. He wasn't the subject of litigation. Uh, of course, he was hiding in the car. We are told he was hiding in the car somewhere around the court premises. But what do you make of the fact that they are out there with propaganda saying the court is not, it hasn't ruled yet. The case is not over yet. What do you make of that? Oh, well, uh, quite a number of things. Number one, Sarko himself, uh, he cannot avoid this case because actually there was a documentary evidence presented in court as one of the exhibits. I think that was exhibit one of the exhibits exactly, uh, stating that he was the one who someone committed. So right. and that was the only document, the only documentary evidence showing that a meeting was so was scheduled and who scheduled the meeting. So uh, Sarko cannot avoid being immersed in his own trap. And uh, let Amazonians know that if you have a leader that does not want to take responsibility of anything that happens during his uh, tenure of office, whether it's good or bad, uh, that leader is very dangerous. And uh, he, sh he is incompetent to be a leader. Uh, because uh, he knew that was not a board member of the Ambazonia Foundation, uh, and and that he had no and local. Not only standard. that, he wasn't the president of Ambazonia. That that's I was coming. Yeah. So uh, and he was not. He had been impeached and removed, of course. So 
he had no local standard it to summon any meeting and even if he was still the president of ambazonia the bylaws of the foundation does not say that the president of the federal republic of ambazonia can summon extraordinary meetings it does not say that it says the meeting of the president of foundation the treasurer the secretary or two board members so even if he was still the president of ambazonia if he had not been yet been impeached and removed he could only advise the president the secretary the treasurer or two board members to summon the meeting he had no there was no way that he could summon the meeting so that was the first part right there and uh, i want to let all the ambazonians to know that if you are supporting the uh, uh dr sako and also his activities you should be very careful because uh this particular uh court that has spent a lot of energy time and money coordinating the activities of the defense for more than a year now is waste the time really wasted and the money that is spent in paying lawyers be it the defense or the petitioner is a waste of resources that is we're talking of probably more than sixty thousand dollars spent on this case that could have been used on ground one and ground zero yeah. uh, to prosecute the war so I, I there's really nothing to celebrate in this case if there's anything to celebrate it's only one thing and that one thing is defending the institutions of ambazonia correct making sure that any leader present or future does not take upon his or herself to usurp the powers that are bestowed on him by the people of Ambazonia, of Ambazonia to change things to favor him for personal gain. That, that those institutions are being strengthened, and this case is a pointer that no one person is above the law, and that no one person can usurp the powers that are bestowed on him by the people. And if the people was was see if the people take away that power from you that you cannot hang on to it and and and, and now misrepresent the people by, pers by, by personifying uh, by making yourself purporting to be a leader that you are not and then committing offense against the, the the people of ambassador so these are the kinds of things that we are looking at and i i pray that it never come to pass again and uh, when uh, talking about the idea of um of appeal uh I, I don't see any grounds of appeal that uh, uh any person want to try this time uh because uh maybe let me educate the people of ambazonia the difference between a trial court or the court of first instance and an appeal court the difference is that the the court of trial or the court of first instance is when the facts of the case are presented the witnesses are presented and then the both lawyers present their closing statements and based on this the documentary evidence the evidence the documentary evidence the, the witnesses and the closing statements the judge now passes a judge it passes a judgment and now when that happens if one of the parties the parties that happen to be the case debtor in this case the case debtor are the people that petition which, who are the people of, of uh, who petition against the people of ambazonia because the people of ambazonia are the case creditor because the verdict came in favor of them if you if the people that are the case debtors meaning the people of sako you decide to waste money to take this to an appeal what the appeal court a court does is look whether the law was well applied or not where the principles of law apply as the way they were supposed to be applied once that is seen then you are uh, the appeal fails in this particular matter everything was presented the witnesses were there the documentary evidence was there abundantly both the lawyers for the defense and the lawyers for the uh the petitioners were there and did their closing statements and based on that a judgment was passed now we we'll wait for the written judgment to come out for those for the thomases 
that want to see before they believe, uh, that judgment will, will be coming uh, out in the, probably the next two weeks or so, and it will be published so that everybody can read uh, know everything for themselves. So you cannot waste any more money thinking of appeal because it does not make any sense because appeal court is, will see that all the documentary evidence, the law was applied in the way that it was supposed to apply. Once that happens, then you are wasting money, time, and energy going to the peak, to the appeal court. Yeah, and uh, thanks uh, uh, about that. And uh, talking about uh, the appeal, they have nothing to appeal uh, appeal for. It is all that they will have to go and maybe manufacture some uh, uh, bylaws to say, hey, we brought in the wrong bylaws to change the facts of the case. Well, uh, there's no piece of manufacturing everything because uh, exhibits were presented in court and were documented, uh, stero stero uh, stereographed, and everything is there. So if you go make any changes or try to fabricate anything, and then, uh, uh, then you are making yourself a fool because that will not stand the test of time. Uh, a court, the court, this is a court in a country that is a country of law. It's not like in a republic where you can go behind the scenes and see the judge and cook the documents or bribe the, the, uh, the judge to pass the judgment in your favor. This is a country of law. Everything is transparent, is recorded, is it was is a, is a stenographed and documented in such a way that it's not just the just the, the judge is there with with two assistants that are there documenting separately. So all the all the evidence is documented and well presented. So there's no question you can fake anything or or no or you can corrupt anybody to pass any judgment in favor of you. And talking about uh, the decision from the court. Uh, you know, one of the arguments I hear the Sarko team and himself making out there is, where is the verdict? I, li I listened to my friend, uh, Dr. Epa, where is the, uh, I mean, Dr. Elad in Germany, where is the verdict? Where is the verdict? They don't understand the court process. The verdict will actually be published on the website of the court if it has not been published yet. And when it is published, they will copy our lawyer, dear lawyer, and they will send us either the links or the copies of that decision. So they should stop. They should stop thinking they can manipulate themselves in every situation. I don't get it. Well, let me. Yeah, I, mean, no, uh, I, go on. I do. I want one one word. I do understand where uh, I be coming from. Um, in some cases, the judge the judge will now go right. The judgment and then every, and, and we summon back to the court. For instance, uh, if the judge could have given put uh, the court on recess and go write the judgment and come back and then pass the judgment, uh, there are cases where the judge will first of all uh, state what his judgment is, like this judge did, and then you go write the judgment later on. And that's so what maybe in this case. Uh, yeah, that's what happened in uh, last Tuesday. So, Barrister Ella, that's what we'll be thinking. So, uh, he can hold his thought. I, I, I will not uh, but him. That. He should know He said he's a lawyer. He, he can hold his thought. When the final judgment comes out, he will uh, he will be able to lay all his uh, arguments to rest. All right. Uh, let me yeah. play a short clip from Dr. Ella. And after that, I bring in the, the Honorable... Sango Luis uh, from the Restoration Council who is here with us. Listen to this. Good day, fellow Ambazonians. Uh, this is your humble servant, Dr. Elite, coming up with this uh, video titled, He or She Will Start Leading the Race Is Not Necessarily the Winner. Okay, I repeat, He or She Will Start Leading the Race is not necessarily the winner. So, this short video is to announce the town hall that is taking place today. Today, the 24th of August, 2023. All right, all right. President uh, Sarko is we, hosting a town hall. We got that. We got that. Let me bring you in, uh, uh, Sango. You listen to 
Sarko, you listen to uh, Ella and all his surrogates. When will these people stop manipulation? <coughs> Do they think they will manipulate their way through to Boya? Um, <coughs> um, Sir to Chris, I, I think there is something here very interesting. You've heard of a case or a situation where the hunter becomes the hunted. This is the typical scenario where a hunter becomes the hunted. There is no question about that. And I think it is also an opportunity to tell Ambazonians that the Restoration Council has been doing an excellent job. It is a vindication or call it exoneration of the Restoration Council. Uh, we don't hold stand. Hold Talking about the Restoration Council chairman, the former chairman, Elvis Comita, uh, re remember, was actually in court and actually called to the to the dog to testify about the rule of the Restoration Council to all these foundations and to the interim government, which is why I really want our people to know structures matter, institutions matter. We ought to be respecting them. It had standing in court to the, for the court to know that Sako was impeached and removed in Seoul was in no place to summon a meeting of Ambazonia Foundation. But go on, sir. Yeah, I think, I think um, this is very evident. One thing that a lot of folks have not come in terms with is just common sense. That one of the reasons why the United States is such a successful nation among other nations is that it stick by the rule of law. If you doubt anything in your life, you just go back and refer whether there are bylaws or a constitution and see whether, whether or not what you are doing is in line with what it says in the written form of the guidelines of, a, of an organization. So uh, we should not play, we shouldn't play, we shouldn't be stupid or foolish, you know, to ignore the rule of law because this country is great one of the greatest nation in the world because they stick by the rule of law. And I always tell, we all I have a tendency of telling people, if you doubt anything in your life, just check the rules. That has to do with what you are trying to do because it is the truth that will set you free. And the rule of law, when you adhere to it, it will set you free. I, I think the size of a man is often measured by the things that makes him very angry. Sako is so mad. He caught. It's just like um, <laughs> a spider caught in his own web. And he's trying to float around to find a way to excuse himself to say, okay, this is not exactly what happened. But you know what? We know the verdict. It is out. He was wrong. He undermined the rule of law. And he deserves the, uh, the shame that comes with it. You can fool people most of the time, but one day, you know what? Your lives will be caught. And he tried in many ways to maneuver himself while he was president, to do unseemly things. And as a member of the Restoration Council, I can tell you that I listen to this man. He is not an honest person. And I'm not surprised this verdict came as it is against him. Because, uh, you know, it's, it's difficult to teach an old dog new tricks. When you're a trickster, you follow through those tricks. Yeah. And we've seen it manifested itself. So, uh, the Restoration Council was so much at the uh, center of this. And as you said, I believe the Restoration Council is uh, vindicated. The Restoration Council is uh, vindicated. Sako is still sitting in there calling himself president of Ambazonia, president of Ambazonia. If I may ask you, under what circumstances would you think this government can work with a group led by Sako? Oh, no, I think he has lost his credibility. He has completely lost his credibility because, you know, you, a, a person is known by his character. When you have a character which is not only deceitful, um, a character which is questionable. 
Nobody want to believe you. I know in, in life, uh, Secretary Chris, in life, one thing which is extremely important is trust. The trust factor is everything about who we are. As a leader, if the trust factor has evaporated, you are finished. Nobody wants to believe you. And I see this as a common practice with a lot of leaders. When your constituency lose that trust factor as a leader, I think it's a foregone conclusion that you are finished. And I think this is just a matter of time. Because, you know, from, we, we try to defend, not only defending, but in, in the past, we told people, we, we we are not a group of people, I'm talking about now the Resolution Council, it's not a group of people who have malice, and biases. You know, we, we try to work with the rule of law, what the Constitution says. This is how we operate. So whether we, we, we say something or we dismiss you by impeachment or one other method of punishment, we are looking directly of you know at what the strict what the law says about that is, that issue we don't fabricate things we'll follow the book follow the rules yeah. if you doubt anything in life as the uh, secretary Chris, just check what guides you as a principle to not derail your thinking or make the wrong judgments and every time you do that if you if you refer yourself to the rules you will never go out you never go astray you always right, do the right thing. And, and I can tell you from a bottom line, um, as a member of the Resolution Council, I've been there for so long, for quite some time, we have followed the rules strictly. And if we impeach you out of the house or out of, your, uh, out of, out of power, it's because we found some deficiencies in you. And that is why we make that decision. And every time you make a decision based on rules, you will always be right. Because when you come to question me, how did I come to the conclusion I would refer you to the rules? You will never be in trouble when you respect the rule of law. Again, as I said, you know, this country is one of the greatest nations in the world. And the reason why they are so great is because they stick with the rules. Today, a former president is in trouble because there is nothing he could do about not being, I mean, respons responsible for what he did because he fronted the rules. That's why it's in hot water. And I love it because even in your home, if you have an institution, a small organization, you don't have a set of rules, this never go well. Right. A well-structured organization always works very well and succeeds well because they stick to the rules. And I believe sticking to the rule is the answer to all our problems. If you doubt it, check the rules. And you know you will not put yourself into trouble. What do you make uh, of uh, people who are still, of course we now know they are so divided, so fra uh, fractionalized to the extent that uh, we learn there is now a calm within them that is asking for Sarko to go uh, according to Ochebas. But what do you make of those who know this truth? Who know how manipulative this guy is, and yet they hang with him. Is this, is this about Ambazonia or something else? Well, I think, uh, Secretary Chris, there's something which is very interesting. You know, character consists of many acts. It can also be lost by one single act. You understand? Yeah. We do many things, but one can bring you down to oblivion. So uh, you can hide your deficiencies, your deficiencies as much as you can. But guess what? There is some one thing that will happen that will bring you down. That, for the most part, it is what tells who you are as a person. And at that point, you lose your credibility and you can go on your own without even having to be sanctioned by the group. So what I see here is people who can still stick <laughs> themselves with, with Sarko in spite of all the odds. But clearly, a man is known by the company he keeps. We know those individuals subsequently are crooks because they have been with him as long as they have been. And they will be with him as long, I mean, even if he falls in hot waters. To them, it's like, it doesn't matter. 
It doesn't matter, but at least it matters. If you are a person of conscience, you can want to live or be associated with somebody who's a crook. I knew this long time ago. You know, when this man was elected, I was very enthusiastic with him as, as president. I, yeah, I recall, I recall that. I remember. Yes. But over time, over time, I saw a lot of his deficiencies in him. And one thing with him is, it's not only, I don't want to use the word corn artist. It's dubious. He doesn't tell the truth. And I think I don't like to associate myself with people who don't tell the truth. It is not a virtue. Being untruthful is not a virtue. It is a terrible thing to be a leader that people can't trust you. You know, I think it's not that I hate him. No, I, I hate the things that he does. As a person, he's a human being. We love him. But the things that he does is what brings bad credibility upon uh, Sako. And, and it's, it's very unfortunate. That is why I think most of us who are in this business, what I mean business, you know, following to ensure that we get to go here. When we see this kind of deficiencies, it's, it's like one step forward, one step behind. We need people who are credible. And before I, before I end up, I want to say something that I've not said before. I think you have been one <clears throat> on behalf of the Restoration Council and most Amazonians. I want to give you a lot of credit for being very persistent and consistent in this struggle. I see you like one person who has done a lot of stuff in this struggle. You are persistent. You are consistent and want to thank you for standing up even when even when you are in a situation where you can compromise but we appreciate everything that you do because you have been there for ambassadors from day one your persistence and consistency is one of the factors that will lead us to boya so we want to appreciate all the efforts that you do to keep the struggle alive. You said, there is let, no let question. Me, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you about that. Let me say something which everybody, I mean, most people out there hold me uh, responsible for. Uh, many people out there point figures and said, Chris, if not for you, Sako would not be here. They say we tried to impeach him. I mean, I mean, we tried to remove him. You stood on the way. You kept him there. You defended him. And let me say something. I did it, comrades. I did it. And honestly, I believe with all my heart, Sako was an honest guy. Two things turned me off. Two things turned me off from him. Number one. When I brought up the issue in the cabinet, the issue of Iringwa being everywhere, which Nelson Ochiba is now talking about, uh, <laughs> uh, Sako, what he did, instead of trying to resolve the, 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 the crisis, you know, he took to every cabinet member and told every cabinet member who would listen to him Chris I know has been compromised. Chris I know has been compromised. That was, if you call the cabinet members, they tell you. He was calling them one by one, one by one, and telling them because he thought he was going to get rid of me. So we began to call them. We began to call them. You guys should be very careful. Chris Anu made a deal with uh, Lara Popolito government, uh, Lara Popolito Cameroon government before his mother was released. He is compromised. You guys be careful with him. That is what he, when I heard this, I couldn't believe it. Till I heard it from about four cabinet members that he called personally. Number two, Sako goes to Brazil in front of a congregation of about a thousand people and lied. He had so many of these churches and God told him he was going to be the president. I was waiting for him to name the, 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 the country he was going to be. He didn't name the name. He didn't name the name. But when he said God told him to give out his churches and he began giving it to his uh, sons, spiritual sons, I look at this guy and I knew he had no church. But he was, he said he was dishing out 
That was the day I, I knew this guy is capable of saying and doing anything. He has no respect. He has no fear of God. He has no ability to, be, to, be, to, to speak the truth. And that was the day I realized I have been defending this guy, but he is actually very, very dubious. Very, yes. very I, I dubious. Think, yeah. I think what happened was that you were in the dark. You didn't know the other side of him. So you saw the positive side. I think I find you probably like a, an optimist. You didn't want to believe that the guy could be as crooked as he has been. So, you know, sometimes... Um, you can fool people most of the time, but not all the time. There will be a moment, just like say, um, many, many days for the thief, one day for the owner. And, and this is a revelation of that kind of definition of what and how we get to know somebody is either a thief or is not a thief. When they catch you, that's the time you come to the conclusion, oh, this guy has been stealing. But, I mean, it happens all the time. Just recently, that's, that kind of a thing happened. You know, you see someone, until when something happens, then you come to a realization, wow, this is how this guy is. So, um, Sergeant Chris, um, I, I, can, I can tell you in very authoritatively that I, I, when I come to your show, I, I think I'm out to state categorically the things that we do on the restoration council we do it with honesty with 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 the professional nature and just to ensure that what we are doing is not the wrong thing so i think just like i said earlier on behalf of the restoration council i really want to thank you for standing firm being very consistent and very persistent in defense of our nation today Thank you. Thank you, sir. Let me get to uh, Comrade uh, Oliver here. Uh, let me get your thoughts, uh, Comrade, on this uh, manipulation that we hear out there. And uh, perhaps, perhaps, why we still find people hanging behind this guy in spite of who we know he is, his dubious and manipulative nature. Well, um, uh, to pick it uh, back on uh, what uh, Honorable uh, Restoration Council member just said, um, with regards to uh, Secretary Chris that we know, everybody see call you Secretary Chris, and you've been for a very long time. Um, uh, a true leader only is known in the most difficult times, when you can stand all the difficulties and navigate troubled waters over to the other side. A true leader is he who does not give up even when he is blackmailed. A true leader stands the test of waters even when he is tested and to see whether he can be corrupted. A true leader looks forthright is honest he can be trusted by his people he helps his people if you are if the leader is not honest he cannot be trusted and he does not help his people he is not a leader so no matter all the uh, the blackmail that i see every day every minute from a lot of people that do not really understand the facts about uh comrade chris and Commonwealth Chris has the skin that is thicker than a rhinoceros. And I think I want to give that credit to you. Stand, stand your ground and keep forging ahead. Because uh, even uh, some people will fall on the sideways, and that's what every revolution is. Some people will fall on the sideways, but the true ones will stay put on to the end. So I want to thank you for your service to the nation of Ambazonia and just keep saving it then coming to uh, uh the idea of some people see supporting uh dr sako uh it shouldn't be surprising to you because even the devil does have friends 
It, do, it doesn't matter how good you are or how bad you are. You're going to have some people that like you and some people that do not like you. So Sarko wins no matter how deep he sings into the Pacific. He, he will see our friends. But what is very important is that the people that have consciences and the people that can understand, the people that can understand and read the writing on the wall, the people that have Ambazoni at heart, and the people that want to stay put and make sure that Ambazoni becomes independent, independent and free, and that we are able to govern our own affairs how, where, and when we want, they will eventually, even those who are still backing up, they will eventually give up, as many are giving up already, because they know on a daily basis, his, people are quitting his camp, because they know, they now understand exactly who Sako is. But my problem is not actually talking about personalities. I don't believe in talking about personalities. I believe in, in spending my energy on institutions, building strong institutions and ideas and developing an ideology that is pertinent and great for the nation to move ahead. That is where I want to spend my energy. That's why you will never see me send out an audio or write anything lambasting Dick, Harry, or uh, Vanessa. I don't spend my energy on those things. I am born to uplift people. That's why I sing and I write music and I speak. I, I uplift people. I am a positive thinker. And that is the kind of energy that I want to garnish and bestow on other people. So I don't, I don't spend time lambasting or not saying what somebody has done so bad. And uh, one of my key principles is that nothing is too good not to be bad. No, no, sorry, nothing is too bad not to be good. I say that again. Nothing is too bad not to be good. In, in which case, everything that ever happens, including death, there is good in it. You just have to deep, deep enough to find that silver lining. And once you find it, capitalize, capitalize on it and forge ahead. So what Sarko has done, there's a lot of good in it. And where is the good? That people begin to understand who is who in the Ambazonian struggle. And people begin to understand that it takes time to understand characters. I, I wrote a song which I released called the ABCs of life. A for attitude, B for behavior, and C for character. And before I wrote that song that I released uh, last year, um, I had taught kids uh, Eight to twelve for thirteen years on character building. So I define attitude as how you feel or think about somebody or something, and behavior is how you act on how you feel or think about somebody or something. And then character is your behavior over a long time. So Sarko's character attitude change into behavior, and then change into character. Because we have seen this over the years, who he is. So people should be able to understand. And uh, no matter how deep he sings, like I said, in the Pacific Ocean, he will still have some people around him. But eventually, uh, they will understand how, what Ambazonia stands for, what the struggle is, and what needs to be done to get to the finish line. Sango, you have anything to add there, please? Uh, yes, I, I think I had one more thing in my mind. Um, <clears throat> sometimes in life, we make a lot of mistakes. But when you make mistakes and you cannot admit those, you cannot admit those mistakes, then it becomes <clears throat> it becomes problematic not only to you but to your community. The first step in creating a lively atmosphere, a conciliatory atmosphere, is first admitting that. You did something wrong. Unfortunately, I don't see that like one of the attributes of uh, Dr. Sarko because he's always very defensive. He never accepts mistakes, which is not a virtue. Because, again, the first thing to create 
an atmosphere of not only an enviable atmosphere, an atmosphere of camaraderie or reconciliation, is to admit that, you know what, I'm sorry for what I did. He's not that kind of person who would admit his fault. And it is a tragedy. Call it a travesty because um, it's very unseemly. That's an unseemly character. I just hope he can find time in his side. Because what we're looking for in this struggle, I have this feeling of us getting together, all the factions getting together. But unfortunately, you know, you can take your horse to the stream, you can't force us to drink. So if you have people like in the like of Sako who cannot admit an error, it will be very difficult for us even to get together to find a common ground and move forward. We have been struggling to have and, and, and the problem, the problem is not only Sako. The, all the leaders who have sent out of the out, out, out of the out of office because of deficiencies, they have yeah. the same character. Now, how do we do it? It's anyone's guess. Because if you cannot accept that you did, you did something wrong, there is more likely than not very difficult for us to get. Well, uh, 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 Sango, this is this is what I have been thinking, and I think I have communicated this to some of. Uh, the leaders out there. This thing can be done very easily. Nobody says Sako is not a leader. He has been the president of this interim government. He walks away with uh, a little chunk and still uh, uh, remain, he remains a, a leader. All what I have said is you want to remain relevant as a leader of Ambazonia, just give your organization a different name. Don't call it the interim government where you know you are usurping the interim government because you cannot boast of a restoration council judiciary. I mean, the, 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 the mechanism that makes up the interim government, you are usurping. Uh, I have said the same thing with Marianta. Just give your organization a different name. We have no problems. We work together as a team. Correct. We all agree for the common enemy. Uh, the Sisiko uh, people, just give your name another name uh, uh, let, and let's work together. You can't out there telling people you are the interim government, you don't have the Restoration Council, you don't have the Judiciary Council, you don't have all these structures that make up the interim government. So working together is very easy if people will understand simple things like this. We are not saying don't lead a group. Absolutely not. We are saying you cannot out there. You cannot be out there telling people you are the interim government when what makes up the interim government you don't have, Comrade Oliver. Yeah, uh, I, I think uh, thank you very much for bringing that up, uh, uh, Comrade Chris. Um, we need all Ambazonians, all hands on deck. Uh, was rightly said they need everybody uh, all hands on deck and uh, nobody can can uh, prosecute this war and this struggle by himself and uh, there's no way we need we need all hands on deck and uh, the worst thing that can ever happen to any person is a closed mind you have to leave your mind open when your mind is open then you are giving room for ideas to flow in when those ideas come in, all that you need to do is filter them and take those that are worth the salt and run with them. Yeah. So we need all, everybody on deck. And uh, I, I'm, I still really want to see a day where we can be able to sit in one room with all everybody that is a, is a leader of one organization or the other to kind of just water down the ego Evil means ash got out. That's what that word means. You ash got out, meaning that you are pretending to become God. So ego is a bad thing. You don't want to ash God out. We put God yeah. into everything that we do because we are his creatures. So even though God created us in his own image, meaning that we are demigods because we have those power, but we are still not God. So we cannot ash him out because of ego. So we should just slow down the ego, our ego, and come together and refocus. 
the whole idea of Ambazonia is to get a fair, a free Ambazonia that is independent with its structures, able to run its own activities and make Ambazonia an Africa in miniature. An Ambazonia that will beat the record of Rwanda that came out of a genocide just like Ambazonia is in a genocide, and within a, a quarter of a century, has turned things around to be looking the way it is at becoming a vacation destination. We, that's what we are looking for, Ambazonia. And in order to do that, we just need all the leaders. I cannot start naming the leaders because there are many. We respect every leader that is running an organization. It is your right to do it. And we honor and respect you to do that. But you, you one organization as it is now, we are so balkanized, so much scattered around, that if we don't work, we don't look for common grounds to work together, we will not be able to have Ambazonia. So we need the leaders just to water that, that ego and refocus that our goal that was in 2016, 2017. That time we were very united and we were running very fast. So I just think that number one, all leaders water down your ego. Number two, cooperate with the interim government. I, I, we don't even care whether the interim government is called the IG or not. When we meet together, we don't, we don't care whether, whether there's an interim government or not. We just know that these are in the Ambazonian organizations that are fighting for one cause, namely, free ambazonia once we come to terms with, i think that is a common denominator that is a common one every genuine ambazonia organization the common de denominator is that we want to get to boya now if we agree on that the problem now is now the methodology how do we get there that is how what the things that we need to work on how do we get there once we settle on that, then we can now begin to share, do some what is known as division of labor, sharing. Okay, uh, uh, this organization, you can do this, be taking care of diplomacy, uh, do some fundraisers. No, we let's, this is how we want to handle rest the restoration forces, and so on. We share the labor and then have a common umbrella that we meet and brainstorm and give feedback. On what we are doing in the field so that we are, we are able to do some auto criticism and see where we can uh, we can feel the holes some lapses that are happening if we do that, that we of the very short term because um, a lot of republic has hardened out and not coming to the negotiation table because they think that we are there are so many factions organized so they, they they're thinking that they're thinking that they get out some of the actions against the orders and and that's why they are claiming that they don't know who to negotiate with so it's okay. important for us to cooperate yeah if i can piggyback very quickly before i leave sure. the office is closer sure. yes um I, I think i think sometimes it is well known that more sometimes is better than less you know our factions you know on one hand cannot be completely negative we have one thing in common, which is that we need a free nation. If our factions don't want to reconcile, let's reconcile on the main reason why this struggle is existing, a nation of our own. The other factions can now, you know, we can work with these other factions in a variety of ways. Let's unite to form one group. Then all the factions can operate differently to have a different um manner of operation they can handle one thing just like my you know comrade just mentioned they can handle one aspect of the revolution you know more is always better than less but we have one thing in common than our differences you know that differences can be okay you, you will handle this 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 faction will handle this this faction will handle this but we have one goal a free ambazonia you know more is always better than less so, I mean, we can use our fashions as a positive side of the struggle yes. without necessarily being all, right. you know, all of us being together. It's, it's just a fact. Yes. 
handle one part of the revelation. But we have one goal, which is we need a nation of our own. Uh, differences may, in many ways, may not necessarily be very negative if we can do some kind of division of labor. But our strategy is let's get together on one front and free our nation. I mean, there is nothing loftier in life to see Ambazonia be a nation of its own. Secretary Chris, I have to leave the office almost closed. All right, <laughs> all right. Uh, Sango, thanks a lot. And uh, if uh, Comrade Oliver is still uh, available, please just uh, stay, uh, stay put. Uh, there, let me open the phone lines and uh, let's. I like to hear from Ambazonia, not just Ground Zero, from but uh, all over the globe. Uh, when I come back, I open the phone lines and take your phone calls. Please don't touch that okay. uh, remote. Thank you. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. At this moment, we will open the phone lines and take your calls, take your contributions, hear from you, have your take on the, the events of uh, the week, talking about this court case, Sarko versus uh, Ambazonia. The phone number is there on your screen. And uh, please make sure that before you call, you go ahead and uh, turn down the volume of your TV set. Make sure you turn down the volume of your TV set before you call. I really love to hear from those of you on Ground Zero uh, about this, uh, this case and others. All right, let me get to the first caller here. Hello. 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 Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Mulang, Mamenda. 
Molan Abakwa. All right, good to hear from you. What is in your what is on your mind? Yes, thank you, sir. We are actually celebrating the good readers uh, of Stapo. We are at last the greatest enemy of this revelation has been to be neutralized. <laughs> last, long last. Sako is the single greatest enemy to the population. So congratulations to that, for that. Great congrats. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe he should be congratulating himself because we actually did not sue him. He sued us. That makes it even more interesting. Uh, exactly. Yes. Yes, that makes it more interesting. The question though is, what will happen if he tries to fight back because he would definitely want to fight back as as I listen, 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 take this to the bank, 200%. He has nothing to fight back on, zero. Okay. I'm saying this on television. Okay. That's good. Yes. Okay. All right. Let's Thank you. On school resumption. Yes. No, excuse me. On school resumption. I, I recall last last year, the same trade that you are issuing here was issued last year that there will be no government school. I actually, I actually sent my child to come into the private school because of that trade. But in the end, government schools operated go with no problem. So what are you spending this time to make sure that there will be no government schools? And then, what is the use of community schools? That continue to operate in the syllabus of those people continue to, continue to teach French and their syllabus. What is the use? Thank you, sir. It is, I, I am quite interested in the, the last point you made. Community schools continue to teach French. Uh, we are not aware of no. that, but please, uh, I would say you come across any, any school on ground zero community school, private school, teaching French, raising a lot of public to Cameroon's flag, singing their national anthem within their premises. Please, let's know. Let's know. Uh, as far as government schools are concerned, I have assured you restoration fighters will take care of them. This war began over the inability of French Cameroon to listen to the grievances of Amber teachers over what was being taught in our schools, and the situation has not changed, and they just think that we can go back to those schools as if nothing happened, isn't it? So we are determined it may not happen tomorrow, may not happen the first week or the second week, but I bet you we will slowly shut down anything called government school in Ambazonia. Government school owned and operated by La Republic du Cameroon. Thank you for the call. Okay, thank you. All right. <clears throat> Okay, the phone line is open. Uh, please go ahead, make your call. Remember to shut down the volume of your set before you call. The line is open. Okay, hello. Okay, the phone line is open. Hello. Hello, I'm Secretary Chris. Good evening. Good evening, sir. May I know where you are calling from, please? I'm calling from the great state of Momo. The great state of Momo. Okay. Oh, I lost you. I lost the caller. I hope he calls back. Oh, he's yeah, still, oh, he's still on. Okay. All right. All right. From Momo. All right. What is on your mind, sir? Yes, sir. We, we have been happy ever since we got this. This, uh, this, uh, this news from the court before today. Okay. So we, yes. So we are, we are very, very happy here in Ground Zero, and there is something we want our former president Sako to understand. We, the people of Ground Zero, we are, we are having sense. We are so, so talented in such a way that. When things are happening there with you people, we already know the truth and we know the lies. So he should stop playing games with people. He should stop wasting money in court. He should give some of you the, the, the money to help us here here, here on, on the ground. His attitude has helped to, to destroy so many fighters on the ground. 
it has brought so many division on the ground. But Pa, we are appreciating you today and your government since yesterday we have been enjoying ourselves because before you we, you come on your show today we already heard about everything that transpired there in, in the diaspora. So we are very very grateful. We thank you very much. Continue with that same with that same spirit. All right, thank you, sir. I appreciate the call. You remain safe out there. All right. Okay. The phone line remains open. Go ahead. I like to hear from Ground Zero. Even you in the diaspora, I like to hear from you too. Even if you are on the other camp, please feel free to call. You know, I am very open here, and I take calls from everybody. Take opinion from everybody. Everybody. So go ahead and call. The line is open. Oh. Okay. I know that so many people on the ground do not have electricity, as I'm reading here, especially up in the northern zone. So many people, so many towns without electricity. Okay. <coughs> Hello. 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 All right, I think, uh, hello. Good evening. Uh, good evening, sir. Where are you calling from? Hello. 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 Well, I guess I can get you. Uh, I think you have network issues. Please go ahead and call. I saw some people trying to call. Go ahead and call. Go ahead and call. The line is open. Hello. This is a poor network. Uh, please go ahead, try. If you are trying to call, just keep trying. Some of you have very bad networks. Okay. If you are trying to call, try calling back until you can get through. And those of you in the diaspora, I'd like to hear from you too. If you are in the diaspora, let me hear from you, please. The number is there on your screen. Okay, ground zero, calling. Hello. 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 Yes. Can you turn down, can you first of all turn down the volume of your TV and focus on your phone? Okay. Hello. Hello. All right. I'm done that. All right. Where are you calling from, sir? I'm calling from Victoria. Okay. I can still hear your television in the background. Can you walk away from it, please? Okay. Yes, you are. You sound. You sound better now. What is on your mind? Yes, I'm calling from Victoria. Okay, go on. Yes, sir. When we got this news today, I cried. Just came from my eye that when you said you told people about this, they did not believe you. They throw stones on you. But it's God. You are since you are working with a clear mind with God. Everything God will always take care. So he himself has exposed himself. So we like that. Good. Thank he you. Exposed himself. We like that. Continue, sir. God should bless you. Bless your family. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Stay safe. Okay, sir. All right. All right. Okay, I saw many people trying to call. Go ahead and call, please. The line is open. Go ahead and call. Hello. Hello. Mr. President, Good afternoon. 
afternoon. How are you? Good afternoon, Doc. How are you, sir? Okay. What is on your mind? I want to be one for pigeon. Okay. The thing where he phoned me, my country people there, my son and Bazaar. Doctor Sako really sent the accomplices there for front. May they go fall inside hole where he no say that whole day. Why he be hiding for back? It is very, very, very shameful. I do not understand how Ambazonians, where they no say rules day, and they no one follow that rules. They instead want to play the mago mago then then game. How people they go really go court? Where bylaws they where they govern the conduct of how certain things get to be done. They don't follow that conduct. They really carry their head, go shame themselves inside court. For front people there. So it doesn't make any sense. It really does not make any sense. Yeah. The last thing I want to for the, the last thing I want to for the matter I say, you don't talk the correct thing, Congress Chris, Mr. President. It is important to follow rules and institutions. And the thing where I'll be very glad I say the United States is not a banana republic. Yeah. It is not behaving with some of these dictatorial tendencies, these BR type tendencies that we see some Amazonians have carried from La Republic and brought to the United States and then they want to be forcing some of us. Hey, hey, don't, but let me hold you let me hold you a little bit there. Can you imagine there is a, a, a video clip making the rounds on social media of Sarko saying uh, if you give me one million dollars, I take you to Boya uh, in the next one year. And if I do not, uh, uh, take me out as your president. <laughs> I'm sure you have seen that uh, that footage. Now he did not he, he did not only uh, not take us to Boya with that money. Even when elections came up for him to stand elections, he refused to stand elections. It's shameful, Comrade Chris. And, 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 and that's why I have, I have to thank people like you, and I even have to thank our Restoration Council because the right thing was done. You know, what, what Sister Victorine went and got herself messed up in is because of the fact that some Ambazonians have this habit where they do not like to read. The Constitution that governs the conduct of the interim government with its terms of reference clearly states that the Restoration Council has oversight responsibilities over the executive, can hold the executive accountable, can impeach the executive, can query the executive to make sure that the executive is being productive, and can also set the term limits for the executive. The but, you know that, right. but, but you know that people who are dubious and manipulative always like to poke holes in every piece of document so they can have their way. And that is what uh, Sarko uh, did. They quickly, he quickly summoned a number of his supporters within the board of Ambazonia Foundation, called a meeting, met Victorine, the new president, Victorine, uh, 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 calls a meeting. Uh, I mean, Sako calls a meeting. He makes Victorine the president. Victorine goes to court and says she was the one who called the meeting after uh, she realizes that Sako had no standing to have called a meeting and the evidence comes out in court with a Zoom meeting precisely announced, showing Sako announcing the meeting and she did not refute that. Like I said, it's very shameful and even as what Comrade Sangoloba said, it goes to show you the character of the person who is doing whatever they're doing. At the end of the day, my fellow Amazonians, we are operating in a virtual environment. And in this virtual environment, you have to be able to trust, you, well, let me say, you have to give people the benefit of the doubt based on this system of gentleman's agreement. And the only way you can evaluate a person's ability to adhere to a gentleman's agreement or a gentlewoman's agreement, given that we're operating virtually, is their character and what they do and the things that they show you. Unfortunately, Dr. Sako has shown that he cannot even operate in this virtual space because he's going to play fast and loose with the rules. And he will find people who will support him in doing the bad thing. Yeah. And telling him the truth so that he does the correct thing. And as a result of that, my fellow Amazonians, you need to choose your leaders 
very carefully and choose who you follow very carefully so you don't go and fall in the hole while the leader is standing behind not being embarrassed. Because he, he was sitting on the damn parking lot. What the embarrassing these people in court. <laughs> yeah, sitting on a, a damn parking lot. Why is people were sweating in court? All right, dog. Thank you for the call. Let me take this caller from Grand Zero. Thank you, sir. You have to care. All right. Okay. Did I lose that caller? Uh, go ahead and call, please. Please, this one said, please give me the phone number of the chair of Wabane. Okay. All right. Let's get to the caller here. Hello. 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 Hello, Hello sir. I can hear you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Where are you calling from? Yes, I'm calling from Idea. Idea in the in La Republic do yes, Cameroon. Yeah, yes. All right. What is your contribution, sir? Jackery to to Tatum. There is no amber boys in the road. I saw only a military in the road. So the thing surprising. I don't know how we can do before our children to go to school. Why do you why do you expect amber boys on the road when military is on the road? Don't you hear that they are fighting guerrilla warfare? Yeah, because now Amber boys are not meant to man the roads. Well, well, that is a very legitimate question, and that is a point I have been making here that parents would have to take responsibility for the security of their children before they send them to any school, even private schools. Yes, because our, from our village we have we have a we have community school, but now they brought a military and stopped in our village. So we don't. Uh, I'm asking the question because I was in the village. Yeah. I saw our father ask, "Can go to school?" Right. Well, uh, again, that is uh, the statement I made here that everybody on ground you have children who are schooling consider the security situation before you send them anywhere to go to school. Thank you for the call. All right. Okay, the phone line is open. Go ahead and call. I know so many people have been trying to call across. Uh, okay, let's see. Hello. 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 All right. If you call, you have to hang by it. Hello. 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 Yes, please turn down the volume of your TV and uh, or you walk away from it, please. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from the Okay, and what is your contribution, sir? My contribution is, is about what is going on. Okay. I'm not celebrating of what have happened as have happened in USA. But what I'm, I want to talk is how can we do to carry on and liberate ourselves from this bondage that we are inside? I'm sorry, what how can we do what? How can we liberate ourselves from this bondage that we have put ourselves? We were feeling that we were, all of us who were happy that the struggle is going perfectly. The struggle has made us to know that we had an aspiration that we had the country in it. And today, we are losing ourselves, tying, we are tying up in the same mess and the same piece that we, we don't believe we had another. I really don't understand. Who are you blaming? We are not blaming me. I'm not blaming you. What am I saying is, what can we do? What can we do to see our homeland? We had a, we had a, a song we were singing, Oh, my home, my home, oh, my home. 
Well, Charlotte, my home. No, we remember of those songs. <laughs> you see, you see. Let me, let me, let me, let me interrupt you there a little bit. Uh, so many people, when this uh, struggle started, uh, I think they were with the idea that it was going to be over in six months, and Ambazonia will be a nation, or one year, or maybe two years. Ah, yes, three years. Uh, when you have a dog that carries a bone to eat and you show up to take the bone from the mouth of the dog do you think the dog sits there and wait for you to uh, for you to take the bone out of uh, its mouth of course not the dog runs away will fight you uh, as much as it can to make sure that it owns the bone and eat it a lot of people is a dog here they have been eating all of us since 1961 and food is about to be taken off their mouths and you think they will just give up that easily, that quickly? Of course not. The good thing is that we have surprised them. The two cubes of sugar which they thought in two weeks will dissolve have gone for seven years and seven years and if it means going 30 years, we have no choice. And let me say this, comrades. We have all the time. We have all the time for this war. A lot of people to Cameroon doesn't have the luxury of the time for the war because their debtors will start banging by their doors and say, we cannot give you any more money because you are not producing anything. All their parastatas are in debt, including the Sonora. When they can no longer make money, who will give them the money? China will not continue to pump money. Even Russia will not continue to pump military equipment and money to them. The French will not. A point, I mean, a time will come when those countries will say, you know what, you got to fix the situation there. You got to do something. You got to go sit, you got to go sit down and talk and negotiate. So I think we have done, in spite of our differences, our problems, we have really surprised the Republic of Cameroon, and let me assure you, we will get there. We will get there. Thank you for the call. Let me get to others here. 42 missed calls. Wow. Hello. Hello. Where are you calling from, sir? Hello. Yeah, good evening, Comrade Good evening, sir. Where are you calling from? United Arab Emirates, okay, what is on your mind? Yeah, regarding the court case, I just say, the only thing I can tell is that I'm to people listening to Barista Fu. Well, I don't, Barista, hold on there, hold on there, comrade. You are the second person uh, bringing uh, Barista Fu into this case. I was surprised, I thought that at least Barista Fu or uh, Timothy B. Sir, they were all going to be in court, at least, just to observe the proceedings. None of them, none of them were there. Uh, but it's uh, uh, through, uh, and so it wasn't there, and he lived right there in that town. At least for me, uh, at least all the way in Philadelphia or Delaware or so. But uh, Frunso was there in Maryland, didn't show up. Sarko was there, and then he was hiding out in the parking lot in a car. They didn't show up in court. All right, go on, sir. No, it's quite surprised that it, and a group of man like this cannot even listen to his, his, own, his own self. You begin to listen to people as well because they call themselves their lawyer. Because it's around them with food. With lawyers lawyer thought that he cannot go over just believe everything and they go to court. He will just be the way he, he thinks. We that is not how he's supposed to go. These are simple things that he can use his own wisdom, but don't put the belief on people. People who are fighting for their own self-interest. Because right now, somebody like Barista Fu, Barista Fu is fighting for his own stomach. So now, no matter what, uh, he's fighting for his own belly. Well, uh... But the man cannot understand. They keep on fully... Oh, see, sir, sir, sir. Anyway, we don't forget about that one. I listened to the old Joe uh, in the chamber. Made the other day, I laugh on the... <laughs> <laughs> Right. Is it, that, that, that is a case of dog eat dog, isn't it? 
this is the same guy who, when this prophet corrupted in the interim committee, this same guy who were making good you every every day. I will send good you, send it and that that you give to me to the Zaku. And today he is the he is the, he is the same person I give to me to the Zaku to start a real Yeah, yeah, they said I gave ultimatum to Zaku. Now Ochiba is giving ultimatum to Zaku. I can't wait to see what a Zaku respect the ultimatum, right? The problems I have with that same Ochiba is that is that. Um, I think we are going out. We will consume that I think what that he has put it all this while. Well, I, I can assure much. you, Sako <laughs> will choose I think what to nurse and whatever. <laughs> it cannot be possible. <laughs> because his hands are his, his hands are very tied when it comes to I think what and. Uh, she can go anywhere, even when she holds the treasury, as, as Ocheba says, uh, ransom. Uh, Sago has no choice. Uh, Ocheba will go, Irene will stay. The issue is that Tom, if Sago is somebody that who cannot live it to his own self, who cannot think like a man and take a vision that can help, help and also help the struggle. This same Ocheba nation has been one of the people that has been, that has scattered the struggle from the from Kwewa. Just because I could just align to begin to do that, just because because he's supporting it. Oh, every that every rock that he's doing, he's supporting it. No matter what the rock that he, no matter the things that the guy is doing that are lies, but Sako so keep on believing it because he's supporting the somebody, supporting. So this is where the Sako is going to find himself now. And now the the same guy is giving ultimatum for him to slash Arimwa. I had this. I had to. I had to be really carry this kind of thing. Remember, oh, well, welcome, Red. Uh, thank you for the call. Let me try to get back to ground zero. They are trying to call a lot. Thank you for the call. <coughs> Hello. Hello. Hello, comrade. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Where are you calling from, please? I'm calling from Maison. Okay, and what is the contribution? Yeah, my contribution is this. I congratulate you people for the victory. This is a victory for Ambazonia in general. Yes, sir. Yes, because I could imagine if we could get to Buya with Sako as president after refusing the call for election by the Restoration Council. I wonder how our institution could look like. Well, he will be uh, another Paul Beer, right? <laughs> Worse than Paul Beer. <laughs> he will be there until so, he passes. He passes it over to his son. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> I only wonder the people that are behind him. I want to call them in quote. Owners of certificate without education, those who are behind him, that's how I address them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, sir. Thank you for the call. Thank uh, you, thank you. More strength, more strength to all of us. All right, thank you. Revolution are for courageous people, not for those who are not courageous. So, thank you. Gradually, we'll get to Buya. There is no problem. All right. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Mr. President. Congratulations. Hey, I know this voice. Thank you, ma'am. Good <laughs> to hear your voice. You know this crooked voice. I I'm know so it. Happy, I know sir. it. This is victory. Yes, this is victory for Amazonia. And uh, if you don't mind, sir, please, can you kindly tell us, tell your people, Amazonian people, what we're going to recover from Sako? I think that we should counter sue him for every single thing that he he has taken from the Amazonian people. Well, thank we you for recover. We, we thank need you. to recover AB, ABC TV. We need we need to recover all the money. We need to kick Sako down, put him down forever. We re, is we need to poke him, poke, poke a finger in his eye so that he will never come up to be a, to be uh, a criminal. He's really a criminal. We, we don't want and him we to go to blind. He already poked his own fingers <laughs> in his, into his own <laughs> eyes. We don't want to add sort to injuries. Mr. President, I know you are hard, you are a kind man, but we need to teach Sako a lesson. And I hope that, I hope that Marianta is hearing. Uh, the next I person so. will be Marianta. Because we must recover the money Marianta is keeping. So let, let this be a warning to Marianta. 
thank you very much sir for for standing fast for your people we love you so much and god bless you thank you ma'am i appreciate the call god bless okay uh in the next two minutes i will be calling it a day if i get your phone call great if i don't get your phone call no way. Let me read this. Hello, Comrade President Chris. Congratulations, sir. I want to thank you and our Restoration Council for a job well done. The hunter has turned out to be the hunted in the end. The People's Interim Government has made us proud indeed. Does the IG now have to, no have to, have to now claim our assets from the Conman's Mafia Group? Will the IG now retrieve our ABC from them? Do they? Do they? Let me get this caller before I finish reading that. Hello. 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 Hello, sir. Uh, good evening, Secretary Chris. Good evening, uh, President Chris. Hey, good evening, sir. Where are you calling from, please? I'm calling from Ground Zero. Oh. I the number. All uh, right. And uh, what is your contribution? Well, I just first of all want to say thank you guys for everything you've been doing and uh, thank you guys for the victory and we really, really do appreciate it. Um, not forgetting the fact that all we want is a free and independent state where we could call home. Yes. Um, we're happy for the victory and we should still look forward and face the real enemy. Sako is, uh, I don't know how to call it. He's a, he's a distraction. Man. Really stupid. He's a distraction. He's a distraction. And I call him a tall man and I don't even regard him as anything. So we should still focus on the enemy and schools, schools are coming up. Ban all like public schools and focus on community schools only. And we we'll see as much as possible to push the liberation forward and forget about distractors like Sako, a dull fellow who does not even know his left from his right. Thank you very much. And uh, I listened to uh, Comrade Ayaba talking about uh, collaboration. We just want to say we are behind you guys and we encourage all your efforts and we want to see it go through. And we are suddenly behind the struggle and the revolution. Long live Ambazonia. Thank you, sir. God bless you. Yeah. Hello. 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 This is John, the one and only John Paul. Greetings, greetings, Mr. President. Thank you, sir. Good to hear your voice from uh, Toronto. Yeah, greetings, sir. All right. What is... me, me, yeah, permit me for talk for, for Ambazonian people, for Pigeon, we will, will understand ourselves and for Ground Zero people them. Okay. Yeah. Yes, uh, Mr. President, I just come for, I just hear you talk today, so you, you get to go with us, say, no, me, me, I call. But say, thank you, and for also thank the Restoration Council, and for thank the members and where they don't fight for C and CWT. Made the institution for Ambazonia where we would fight this war. Would you fight La Republic no, because they would like war? Would you fight La Republic because of it? They don't might treat we. And we don't believe say we would come up for La Republic to brothers and sisters and the one carry the same La Republic mentality. For country where it be ruled by law. Or say me will start to accept them. Thank you and thank the Restoration Council members and everybody. I'd be very happy at the year, brothers, and for Ground Zero, we don't call back, we'll see how they be very happy. I just send me a call, I say, thank you, I'm going to keep on, we we'll don't say. Some people then just say this, so we'll, we'll get this independent now one day or two days or three days, no. We'll figure another seven years. The people, the way they fight for gateways where it belongs to them, they know we'll ever quit. We we'll no so. Thank oh. you, Mr. President. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the call. All right. All right. I think uh, we're going to call it uh, a night here. Yeah, please give me a uh, what are you people doing to collect ABC from Sako? So many people asking this question. Unfortunately, I won't answer it on television. Uh, you do not come on television and uh, uh, expose your plans. So just uh, stay put. Let me get this caller here. Oh. 
Hello. Uh, we do not come under the Hello. Uh, Hello. Hello, sir. Can you turn down the volume of your set in the background, please? Okay. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Ganzero. Where precisely? Which county? <laughs> Yes, I'm calling from Meme County. Okay, good to get somebody calling from Meme today. What is on your mind? Now I'm praying at Meme County. Yes, please turn down the volume of the TV in the background and focus on the phone. Yes, we thank God for what God has been doing. We thank the head. We thank the head of state too, right? I thank you for the mercy of God upon you, the strength of God upon you. So I praise you. May God give you more power. Thank you. Yeah, give you more power. So I make you lead the ambassador people. You know, the enemy God will always expose the enemy. Mm -hmm. God will always expose them. The God will wait him and be prepared for hang by the kaya. They will use a hanging to self. So nothing is the history they repeat itself. The word of God must fulfill. And God don't prepare Ambazonia for take the country. I always talk say horses they be preparing the death of battle. The safety is of the Lord. So the praise may God give you more power. I give you more wisdom, more knowledge. We the pray for you. So no arrow where they go form against you will prosper. Amen. So I pray, may God give you more power. More power. And we will take our land. The Kerala Republic go or come down will take our land. Yes. Me meaning the no see for a race. Now only those who God don't ordain the of win that race. So may notice it as this thing be start so to 2016. So it will just end for two years, for one year. No. There's a spirit there for many people. They no one for so far long. They no one for so far long. I will always talk, say, people they always make a certain thing, say, say good thing that they come easy. Absolutely. They, they always forget that. Yes, they always forget that saying. You see, when they, they run the race, but those who God don't touch them, they need to forget them. Because suffering that part for strengthening us to fight more. So thank you. God bless you. All right. Thank you, sir. I appreciate the call. All right. All right. I think uh, we're going to call it uh, a night here, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I want to thank you for all the calls. I am hoping that next week I will surely be back. Let me read this message from those who were not able to call through. Good evening, sir. I have some worries. What will become of the ABC TV, which I think is a state TV? For those who did not have the opportunity to follow you, will ye not continue to mislead them? Let me say this. Whether we take ABC TV or not, it is your choice. To watch ABC or not. How you get me? It is your choice. The TV doesn't turn on itself. You turn it on. So, if you don't want to watch ABC, you don't have to complain. So, uh, that's what I can say to all of you on Ground Zero. Turn it off. Turn it off. Until you take it back. Turn it off. You are not compared to go watching or listening to it. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, again, thank you for tuning in today. Uh, by God's grace, I will be back uh, next week, but let me promise you, we are working here to make sure that Ambazonia uh, is our country. We are making sure, we are working hard to make sure that we capture Ambazonia when you, when when things appear to look like nothing is happening. Nothing is happening. Uh, I want you to know that something is happening. 
And we can only bring it out to you when there is closure, when there is closure. So uh, things are cooking, things are cooking. And uh, when they are closed, we will bring you the results. We are all set and determined to make sure that Ambazonia is our country, the destination we are heading to. Let me seize this opportunity to appeal to everyone from any of these interim governments out there who have been disgruntled, please, please, let's join our hands. Our arms are wide open, wide open here uh, in this interim government for all of us to work together. And I want to appeal to all our county leaders, please, and LGA leaders, of course, revive your LGAs. I am telling you, something is in the pipeline. Something is in the pipeline, and I want every LGA to be revived, every county to be revived before we get there. And for those of you in the fringes, please, come back within the fold. Let's work together. Let's take back our country. Thank you for tuning in tonight. I look forward to coming back here possibly on Monday uh, to be with you. God bless you all and good night.